Good morning. I'm Michael Atwood Mason, and I'm the director of the Smithsonian Center for Folk Life and Cultural Heritage. I've been really interested in Catalan culture for almost two decades now, and I'm really excited to participate in San Jordi this year, even in it, this unusual pandemic format. It's really a treat for me to think about uh, literature that expresses some of the deepest patterns in Catalan culture. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Als Nois by Tony Sala, uh, translated as The Boys by uh, Mara Fay Lethem. It's a terrific book uh, that deals with death in a small community and the ways in which that transforms everyone involved uh, from the most peripheral character, uh, a banker who works in the town uh, to the person, uh, Iona, who was in fact engaged to be married to one of the, the people who died in a tragic car accident. Um, Tony Sala has said publicly that, uh, like all literature, he wanted the boys to explore the universal through the specific. And so he was very, very focused on a specific time and place. The place is Vidreras in La Selva in Catalonia. And uh, La Selva is in some ways the Catalan heartland. It's a, a landscape of farms and uh, there's uh, long-standing logging traditions not far from there in uh, the town of Rio de Renas. There's an enormous amount of uh, productive ag agricultural life in this part of Catalonia. And the book is set in early 2013, at, at a time when the recession was still uh, gripping Catalan society. There was uh, there were moments of inflection that that uh, energized the independence movement, and at the same time, the book does a terrific job of showing the deep cultural patterns of rural life in Catalonia, and uh, so we're we're looking at this time, early twenty thirteen, and this place, La Selva. Just as an aside, I'll say that um, this La Selva is particularly interesting and important to me personally because I, I spent a, a week there with my family once and uh, got to know Vidreras and Rio de Renas and, and Sils um, and uh, Santa Coloma de Farnes. Far, uh, it's, it's a terrifically uh, unassuming part of Catalonia where, as I said, uh, certain patterns of life seem to go on interrupted, uh, go on uninterrupted. And I, I think there's real richness in, in the way in which Tony Sella has portrayed that. So um, a little bit of setting. Uh, Tony Sella has been really clear that he wanted to explore how death affects the personality. And he said that in an interview. And, and I, as I reflect on that, it's fascinating to think about how he shows that. Uh, as I said, the book revolves around a tragic car accident where two brothers, Xavi and Juama, are killed. And uh, the, the small town comes together for the funeral, but then uh, their parents have to figure out how they're going to go forward, having lost their two children. Um, Iona, who's uh, engaged to Zuelma, has got to figure out what's going to happen with her. And immediately other men begin courting her in ways that make her quite uncomfortable. There are also issues of land tenure um, because uh, Xavi and Zuelma's parents uh, don't have other children. They're not able to take care of the land that they have. And, and so Iona's uh, father approaches them about selling the land. Uh, th this multifaceted response to the new situation that these deaths provoke is uh, just a fabulous thing to watch unfold at the, in the masterful hands of Tony Sala, um, who 
is, I, I should say, one of the, the most powerful voices in contemporary Catalan literature. Um, I think for me, uh, the, one of the most fascinating pieces of it, uh, of the story, um, really does revolve around, uh, around place, as I said. And I, I want to read a little bit of the opening of the book, just because I think it'll give you a sense of the richness of the prose. Now, it seems we blame everything on the recession, but the recession wasn't to blame for the display of prostitutes out on the shoulder of the highway, out past the halted construction meant to split it in two, past the two half-built bridges with faded circus posters and the spray-painted words, an 11 highway of shame, divided already, past that stretch of highway with its sketchy mirror version, unpaved and separated by a low wall of concrete blocks, past fields flooded by black water and crowned with shocks of grass. The recession wasn't to blame for that display case filled with fresh meat, a whore every hundred meters. The recession wasn't to blame because the whores were there before. It was during the years filled with cranes that the business extended like an oil spill. But morality doesn't move as fast as money. And with the good years behind them, the girls were still there, resigned like the rest of us to the hardships of the new times. Club Diana announced the beginning of the display as you travel north on the National, before you get to Tordera. Fifteen kilometers later, on the outskirts of Videras, a similar building, another old block of rooms at the foot of the highway, the Club Margarita, presaged the end. They were the landmarks at each extreme. Despite the distance and mountains that separated them, at night, when their neon signs came on, it seemed the two buildings spoke to each other in a code of blinking lights. On the roof of Club Diana, a yellow arrow lit up flying right into a red plast public triangle. On the roof of Club Margarita, a giant daisy lost its petals one by one until it suddenly bloomed again against the dark fields. As I said, you, you get this very gritty moment uh, depicted in uh, this very specific way. The names of particular clubs, the, the way the lights move, the attitudes of these uh, prostitutes uh, and, and the, in this, this changing time. It's such a powerful depiction. Uh, I, another thing about the book, uh, which many people have commented on, is the fact that uh, Tony Sala is really a master of meditation or philosophical reflection, uh, which he's inserts into the minds or mouths of his characters. And uh, when I first read the book, I actually had a pen in my hand most of the time and was underlining sections because I really do think that uh, there's a, a pithiness, uh, certainly in the translation, that is uh, incredibly memorable. And I'll just read a few examples. Um, Money moves between men like a gust of wind. In a small town where the amount of money is always the same, you can catch it, just move from one account to another, like birds changing branches. At, at the funeral of the two boys, Xavi and Juama, uh, one of the characters is reflecting on the strange social reactions that people have in, in, in the context of a, a wake. Uh, and at some point, <laughs> uh, Tony Sala writes, it was the swarm of words that death attracts. That talking, that incessant talking that people use to fill up grief and to try and reaffirm social relationships, a swarm of words. It's a terrific image. Another, another reflection in that same moment uh, of the funeral is um, 
worth reading too, I think. Uh, this is uh, Ernest, the banker, who's uh, uh, one of the, the uh, introductory characters. His co-worker let a moment pass before standing up. No one likes being told they're pretty. When you speak of pretty things, it's because you want your interlocutor to join in. You're offering him a, a, offering him a bit of freedom from his prison of niceties. When you open that door to invite him to share in your baseness, when you're standing there exposed to the elements, it's not pleasant to be reminded that not everyone is from the town and that there are outsiders who only come in to work and who remain unsullied by local misfortunes. Ernest could understand that and forgive Schwalma, even return the favor and invite him to the party of his own lowliness, continuing the exchange of small everyday evils as if nothing had happened. After all, they were people of transactions. They knew how to play with prices and stock values. It was precisely because they understood each other that his repugnance was so strong. Joalma could have gotten violent. He could have scuttled all the things on the desk onto the floor, picked up the letter opener and threatened him, asked him who he thought he was. But he just said, I'm going to the funeral. And one last moment uh, in, in, uh, of reflection, uh, which resonated with me because of the challenges of parenting uh, it, it, at this moment where uh, Ernest has uh, really debased himself in a way that he's not comfortable with. Um, he, he, uh, having gone to the uh, to to be with the prostitutes with another character he's he's reflecting he got up from the bed his daughters had grown up and he had a lot and he'd had to learn not to raise his hand to them but there were moments when you had to when you have children you spend your life risking your dignity your existence lies in the hands of someone else that's what children are they destroy you there should be some way to retire after having them, retire from being a parent. Since there isn't, you have to stay in shape to deal with them, deal with your children, deal with the young. The girl could have been his daughter, and just as he would have with his daughters, he got up from the bed and planted himself in front of her. One more rude remark, and he'd slap her. This kind of, uh, the, the kind of tension of, his past, his own ambivalence about parenting, his, uh, his own powerlessness in the face of other people's desires and actions really comes out here in, a, in, a, in a, this, this very gritty passage. I, I want to think now with you a little bit more about the, the tensions of uh, rural and urban life uh, in in. Catalonia as as a major text, a major subtext in the narrative. Um, it's interesting to me uh, as a student of culture, I think, but um, it's it's also really important uh, for the book itself. Um, I, I think to to think about it, you have to understand that the the the, the boys who've died are the children of farmers. Uh, Iona, who was engaged, is the child of another farm family, their neighbors. And so she's literally been engaged to the boy next door, and all of that is destroyed by this accident. Um, at some point uh, in passing, Iona's father reflects on the fact that her her sister, Mireya, is, as he says, lost to Girona. She's gone to Girona for, for university, and it's clear that she's not coming back, that she's literally lost to the town. And this theme of insiders and outsiders, which you also heard in the passage that I read about the funeral, is really a major, major subtext in the, in the, in the book. Um, it, it's the, the, the insiderness, the, the ruralness of... Iona is is very played up, very emphasized by the fact that she's studying veterinary medicine in the university. So with her, her goal is really to come back and be a vet in this community. 
and to be able to continue the way of life that her her parents and her grandparents said and, as, and lived. And as her father says at some point uh, to to his woman Shavi's parents, you know, it, it's very probable that our great grandparents and our great great grandparents were neighbors here as well. Um, that stability, that long-standing set of relationships in the urban landscape uh, is incredibly fruitful in some ways. Um, Iona is uh, very much connected to animals that she's taking care of um, and, and that are on the farm where she lives, and she has a particular uh, dog named Seda who plays a kind of role of companion after uh, after the boys are killed, um, th this is all thrown in, into into contrast uh, in a in a fairly dramatic way by Nils, who is uh, another neighbor, um, uh, and who immediately uh, starts uh, hitting on Iona after uh, after the after the funeral. Um, he has returned from Barcelona, where he studied art, but but failed out of university. And he's really come to equate violence with art. And his violence is, in fact, directed towards animals. And that is uh, a tremendously painful and violent counterpoint to this, uh, the, the, the values of stewardship and care that Iona and her family represent in a certain way. And, Stewardship and care are not unmotivated. I don't want to suggest that, but uh, th there is a, 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 a real juxtaposition there, I think. Um, so it, it, there's a particular moment in the story uh, when Iona's father realizes that the, the land that belonged to, to, belongs to Xavi and Juama's parents is going to come become available uh, for, for purchase. Um, and Iona kind of has to process the fact that the death of the boys and, and her, her fiancé, the death of the future that she had planned, has really opened another future for her father, a different way of uniting the neighbors. Um, and this comes, this kind of realization comes through an ancestral figure who uh, appears. And I, I want to read a short passage um, just because I think it captures something about this stability, um, but also the values that are represented in this particular way uh, that r rural Catalans are, are, are engaged in uh, these deep ongoing relationships, not all of which are harmonious. Uh, so, so in this scene, Iona has just returned home and her, her father begins speaking to her. Cows came to see us this morning, her father said, when they hadn't entered the house, yet entered the house, but they had already peeled off from the day laborers who were peddling toward town. They're selling the lands of Kanbatya. Yep, she hadn't counted on the ancestral world that reality that preceded and survived the dead. Cal's with his cane, who you ran into in town every time you went, and who showed up at Cambo, their house, two or three times every year since before she'd been born, and who'd been be showing up after she was dead. He walked through the fields along the dirt path, came through the gate and into the house to say hi, as if he were owed something, as if he had every right, and who knows, maybe he did. They'd invite him in and offer him a glass of wine. They told him what had happened since he la his last visit. He shared his information. He stroked the napes of the necks, sorry, he stroked the napes of the girls' necks when they were little. Without the boys, Xavi and, and his brother, Juama, the Batyas couldn't take care of their land. Something lurked behind that fact. How and when did she meet Juama? They'd gone to school together. They'd started dating in high school. Kanbatya was in the same area, behind a little hill. From Kanbao, they could see the two poplars at Kanbatya, one on either side of the big farmhouse. They used to send her over to the Batya's house for tomato seedlings when she was a little girl. 
It wasn't unusual to see one or both of the two brothers at Kanbo when they were 12, 13, 14 years old. In those years, they ran through the fields, playing in them, working them, or both. Later, they'd come over on motorcycle, and before long, the Sereda sisters each had their own horse and could go riding past Kanbacha. They had occasionally all gone out together, and it seemed meant to be one brother for each of the sisters. This kind of uh, deep stability, I think, is, is fascinating. It's a, it's a, a very, uh, it's, it's not, not the way uh, uh, this kind of construction is, is uh, I think, a powerful evocation of the way in which that rural life repeats itself again and again. And, and in this case, it's deeply interrupted by the violence of the boy's death. Um, I don't want to ruin how that happens, um, but you will discover that the the key, if you read the book, you'll discover that the key uh, act has everything to do with this tension uh, in the way in which people care for land and uh, the way in which they relate to each other and they, they care for the animals and the people around them. So, um, with that, I think I will say thank you again for uh, the opportunity to share my thoughts about um, The Boys, Alls Noise, uh, by Tony Sala and translated by Mara Faye Lethem. Uh, it's a fabulous book. I recommend it highly. Uh, it's a good quick read, but it will change you and make you reflect on your own choices, your own relationships, and your own values, I think. So uh, with that, I'll say um, uh, Bona Festa. Happy St. Jordi to you and yours. Stay safe.